What's up? What's up? What's up? You just drove on into the One Nation station. Ooh. Andy Petrillo, Jordan Wilson, Trills and Wills. I just wanted to rhyme because I feel like you yep. typically bring the rhymes. Every, every, oh, oh, oh do, <laughs> are we gonna do uh, for a the podcasters? Just handshake. know that we tried a handshake and it it failed terribly. <laughs> but I love how enthusiastic you were. You said, "Oh yeah, this is the moment." Well, I thought we were gonna do like <laughs> when you eat your Smarties, do you eat the? I thought we were gonna do some sort you know, of patty whack. I don't know what's happening. I know what's going I don't on. Know. Hey, we tried it. <laughs> it failed, but we have time. We, we can work have on just that. joined the awkward handshake high five class. That's what we just did. Anyways, we're gonna <laughs> we're gonna forget that that happened because. We have a particular subject. Ooh. Person. What a guess. Incredible soccer player who we're going to talk about. And that's, uh, we're dedicating this show to Alfonso Davies, everyone. Ooh. Because why not? <laughs> like, is that like end of sentence? We're dedicating the show to Alfonso Davies. But also, uh, we're going to have a special guest join us in just a moment as well, Farhan Devji, who is a former club reporter with the Vancouver Whitecaps. He was there you know, during the Alfonso Davies era, as we know, began in Major League Soccer, began in Vancouver uh, before becoming this Bayern Munich superstar, Canadian national team superstar. And he has written a book on Alfonso Davies. It's going to be coming out in May called Alfonso Davies, A New Hope. So we'll talk to him about that. What is it that he learned interviewing coaches, teammates, people around Alfonso? Uh, what have we learned about Alfonso Davies when he was a little wee thing, mm -hmm. 16 years old, you know, coming on in and playing in Major League Soccer? And there was so much hype around this kid. I mean, he's still only 22. Yeah. Long future ahead. Uh, but I mean, to already see like where it started and where he went, I think we all had hope, but when it actually comes to fruition, isn't it just really cool? It's very cool. What a rapid rise. Like I, I first heard about him maybe like 2016. Um, in Denmark, I, people were just like, usually we, we were missing that Canadian mega star. Like I know for me playing in Denmark, like Atiba killed it for like four years. Mm -hmm. Like you could say his name and he's just like, oh, okay. Um, especially as Canadians, there aren't too many. Obviously, there are more now playing in Europe or just over uh, around the world. But Alfonso Davies is, for me, the first like mega superstar that we've had. Um, I don't know how you feel because I know you've covered the game. I know you've covered the Olympics. Like, is he like the, the biggest Canadian superstar that you've seen like in the game for sports? Sorry, for soccer. Well, for I'll soccer, yeah. I mean, because he transcends just the country and Canada. That to me is, is how you know as well you're this. And it's, it's interesting because when we talk about Atiba Hutchinson, as you're just bringing up right now, and I've, I've often quoted Dave Festchuk, who writes for the Toronto Star. Mm -hmm. He wrote an article a long time ago where he said Atiba is the most famous Canadian not famous in Canada. And I think that's what's typically happened in the world of soccer is you have Canadians who do things abroad and they are famous. Yeah. But in Canada, it's like, who? Mm. Or it can be the opposite where you're big in Canada and the rest of the world is like, okay, whatever. Yeah. And I think, for two in particular, you know, Christine St. Clair and now Alfonso Davies. And, and there have been guys before, but Alfonso Davies is doing something like at such a young age and being a Champions League winner and being a league winner as well. And, you know, being a part of the history of the Canadian men uh, where we've seen them grow. And he's been a catalyst for that. He's been a huge part of that. Obviously, World Cup, right? First time in 36 years, getting Canada's first ever goal. Of course, it had to be him. Yeah to score that first goal for the men at the World Cup. There's just so much along the way where he is not just famous in Canada. He's not just famous globally, like Europe and Germany. He's famous with the two combined everywhere. So he's, he's obviously so talented, fast, he's rapid. But Charles, I'm curious, do you think that's also like with timing as well, like basically growing up now in this era where there's just so much like TikTok and hmm. Instagram, like basically what I'm trying to say is if it was 20 years ago, would Alfonso Davis be, Davies be such a megastar that he is now? Like, do you think that plays into it at all, the context of when he's blowing up? Um, let's put it this way. I think it's helped him because he's a great personality. Mm. So look at when he was injured and couldn't play in the World Cup qualifiers for yeah. Canada. What he was doing on his Twitch platform was so entertaining, watching with his dad, which was also really Very adorable. Sweet. So he knows how to work that medium yeah. and put things out and be entertaining. Mm -hmm. But I think the reason why he's also made people turn heads is because he is so good on the pitch. Yeah. And I think that that would have caught people's attention for sure. regardless. I think the social media aspect helps because he is a good personality and he's entertaining in that way. Yeah. But no, nah, man, his play on the pitch, I think would have caught 
people's eye no matter what. Sure. I think to sell as well, you need to be a person that has quality, which he does. Great left back, left winger, whatever you want to call him. Just a great player. But it's also like he's endearing. I think it's his character. I think that if you have a player that is talented and is also someone that you want to be around or you like look up to or you just want to chat with mm -hmm. when those two merge it's beautiful because they're not also they're, um, they're not always mutually exclusive like you can have a talented player but then he's not maybe the or he or she's not the the nicest person to be around but I get the sense with him is that he's just like a goofball he's a bit shy but he's still like endearing at least that's what he gives off he do, and I hope I never want that to change and I understand I've been doing this a very long time that I know we may not always see it but athletes are being pulled in different directions so many times. So like we're looking at them going, we, you just played a game and now you're doing nothing. Like, of course you can do this and that. You can do this interview, you can do this appearance, you can do, you know, this article or you could do that video. But they're being pulled in so many different directions that I can understand why sometimes they pull back. Yeah. They have a crew around them, agents, you know, publicists, whatever, that will protect them. But to your point, I still hope that things don't change um, because sometimes we have seen that, you know, with athletes, they get a certain kind of level of prestige, whatever. And you're like, oh no, because I think what we've loved about Alfonso Davies is the story, yeah. is the refugee who called Canada home, who grew up, who has this, you know, connection with Edmonton and he has said it and he feels it and the appreciation and the love. And then he was part of the group that went to bid for 2026 World Cup and how he got up and spoke so eloquently about what the Maple Leaf means. And there was, there was a person. Yeah. It wasn't just a football player anymore. You're like, that's a person, that's a boy mm -hmm. who's now growing up to be a man right in front of our very eyes. I don't want that to change. No, I because I know, come on, <laughs> superstar, like when you're a superstar, when you're money, yeah. oh, I don't want it to change. My hope is that this is a guy that like, looks after his family. Mm -hmm. um, BTB Academy in, in Northside Edmonton like helps with this, funds it, also comes with his time. I think this is a person who's well rooted in like discipline and like family values are huge to him. Oh yeah. So I think at 22, like you're literally, you always say but it's you're literally, baby. you're so young, right? I'm thinking back to me being 22, it's like you're very impressionable. But I think what puts you into a different uh, level is just how you're raised, like how you're rooted, how you're connected to your family. So I'm very hopeful with Alfonso because that seems to be something that he doesn't run away from. He's never shaken. He, he gives back to his family, he gives back to his community, and he seems very uh, low-key and like down to earth. So yeah, I really like that about him. I wouldn't mind him being a little um, like high-key <laughs> when it I, goes, what? If you're low-key, you're, are you a high-key? When it comes to... I, I know where you're going, but... Let, you know where I'm going with this. I'd love for him to, uh, to help maybe bring a team back to Edmonton. Mm. Wouldn't that be great? It would be. Obviously, if, you're, if you follow the CPL, uh, and this is so sad because the Eddies were around before yeah. the formation of the CPL. They've been it's around the, for a while. One of the longest standing you know, pro teams in Canada, and they folded. Yeah. They folded heading into this year. Uh, a lot of stuff going on behind the scenes. Anyways, it's really, it's just really sad. Nobody really seemed to have, you know, stepped up and nobody was investing in ownership. Imagine if he became like what Drake is to the Raptors. Wouldn't it be nice if Davies kind of like lent himself as just a PR face and then just one game, one home game, he just makes an appearance. You're trying to tell me that game wouldn't sell out. First What's thousand that? gets like a sign card or, you know what I mean? And just wait. Trills, because I think that could happen it, in the near it future. Could. I, I, I see the trajectory of his playing career. He's at Bayern now, and, and you could say that. You, I don't know. Whoever you watch, you're like, he's a left back that's one of the best in the world. And he's only going to get better. Like, he's only going to get better. Like, as a, as a man, you hit your peak, whatever. People say 27, 28. Mm -hmm. Homeboy's 22. Like, no. like, it's crazy to think about because you look how, like, how, how buff he got and, like, how big he got at Bayern. You're just, like, he hasn't even reached the peak of being, like, a comfortable footballer. What I mean by comfortable is having so many games under his belt and he's just, like, a vet in the game. Like, he's still young. He's still learning his craft. Uh, so, yeah, I think we could see something like that, that happening soon. Yeah, because when you the older you get, you also start to understand fitness better, nutrition better. Yeah. To your point, the games under you. I mean, Cristiano Ronaldo to me is still one of the greatest examples of someone who got more in shape 
yeah. the older he got. Mm-hmm. So, oh my goodness. Yeah, I mean, the sky's the limit still for Alfonso Davies. Let's bring in Farhan Devji, a writer, author, a former, as we mentioned, reporter with the Vancouver Whitecaps, who has now written a book on Alfonso Davies, Alfonso Davies, A New Hope. It'll come out in May. Farhan joining the show here on One Nation. How's it going, Farhan? Doing great. Thanks so much for having me. Well, it's great having you here because um, we're really excited for this book to come out and curious how this book came about for you. Like what gave you the idea and what was maybe the main message you really wanted to get out there in covering Davies? Yeah, I mean, it's been a year. It's been years in the making for me. Like, so I used to work for the Vancouver Whitecaps as their um, in-house club reporter. So I was there at the same time as Alfonso was. Uh, you know, starting his pro career back in, in 2016. So I had the privilege of working with Alfonso and getting to know him at that time. Um, one of my highlights from my, from my time at the Whitecaps was we produced a documentary about his family's journey from Canada, where I went to Edmonton. I sat down with his parents and his coaches and his teachers and things like that and really saw um, what an amazing journey this was. And honestly, it, it was around that time that I first started thinking, like, I would love to write a book about what this one day and and of course, the transfer to Bayern Munich happened, and that only you know made me want to do it even more. So it's been something I've been thinking about for a long time. I felt very close to the story from the very beginning, and yeah, I just wanted to give people a, an inside look at the at the person and player that that is Alfonso Davies. Like that was really my only my only goal going into this. Hey Farhan, um, what were you most surprised to learn about Fonzie while while you're going through this process? Yeah, that's that's a good question. I guess like one of the things that stood out to me was. Because when you look at from the outside looking in, it, Alfonso's made this his this story look so easy, right? Uh, come <laughs> becomes a professional at the age of fifteen, lights up MLS, goes to Bayern Munich, wins a Champions League. So it, it, he's made it look easy, but it, that hasn't necessarily been the case. Like, you know, I was told stories about his early years in Vancouver, where he was, you know, he was really homesick. Like he was living away from his parents for the first time, fifteen years old. He's going to school. Uh, trying to learn how to drive, like something simple like that. Like he was living like an hour or hour and a half away from the training facility. Like, how do I get to training every day? Like little things like that, not to mention, you know, becoming a professional soccer player. And then it was similar in in Munich. Like now he's living on the other side of the world. He no longer has his school friends. He's no longer with his billet parents. He doesn't know the language. Uh, And in those early years, he was in that early year, he wasn't really playing a lot. So um, he said like, that can be a lonely place. Um, so, you know, he's had to overcome a lot, but he's always found a way to adapt. But yeah, that's definitely one thing that stood out to me. Things are never easy. You know, I, we often say, oh, overnight success. If I meet someone in the world of sports who's an overnight success, that'll be the first time because there's no such thing. The hard work that goes into it, the loneliness, a lot of times behind the scenes. And, you know, we keep harping on his age here, 22, but he has had to grown up grow up, excuse me, a lot faster than the rest of us because of those things. Um, Not many of us, you know, move away from home at 16 and then are thrust into the spotlight the way he has. So what do you think maybe some misconceptions have been about Alfonso Davies? Yeah, I mean, one thing that was interesting to me, too, is just kind of these these two sides to his personality. And and I know you guys have kind of touched on that because, like, when you watch him on TikTok, on Twitch, he just seems like this this bubbly, you know, character who, who loves life and is full of energy. And, and he is that, like he very much, that's very authentic to him, but he also has, still has this other side to his personality where he's quiet and, you know, not really comfortable around um, the cameras and even in, in meetings with like his partners and the UN refugee agency, like it takes him a while to come out of his shell. Like, um, you know, that's very much a, still a part of who he is and that, you know, people close to him have told me like, that's probably always going to be, you know, part of who he is to an extent. So I think just, you know, maybe his like vibrant personality isn't, it's, it's, it's authentic to him, but it's not, you know, a 24 seven thing per per se. Uh, Farhan, um, obviously I know you don't want to give a lot away because you want people to read the book. I'm excited to read it in May. If you want to send a copy to us, it'll be early, early. (laughs) I'd love that as well. But um, is there anyone in uh, Fonzie's camp that you interviewed or talked to that gave you like some gems and who was that person? Yeah, that's a good question. Um, I'll I'll give you a a couple. It's hard to pick just one. Um, I had a conversation with with Marco Nepe, who is the the technical director uh, of Bayern Munich. Um, And he had some great insights about, you know, what he saw in Alfonso during the scouting process, how Alfonso got on his radar. Um, 
and you know what he sees as as the future for Alfonso Davies. So you know that one I really enjoyed. Uh, along the same lines, kind of around the transfer, uh, I spoke to the scout from Manchester United who was you know pushing for him, and uh, he was like super adamant that Manchester United needed to sign this guy. He said he at one point he went um, above his boss and wrote directly to to Jose Mourinho that they had to sign this kid. So those those were a couple I enjoyed. Um, and yeah, also, you know, a lot of people close to, to Alfonso, like his, his agent, his, you know, head of media and marketing and things like that. People who he, Alfonso is known for 10 years because he's, these are just people from Edmonton in the, in the local soccer community, right? So yeah, lots of different voices, um, and, and cool stories like that throughout the book. Spill the tea. Spill the tea. <laughs> Before we let you go though, Farhan, I am curious, um, you know, covering the game as long as you have and writing this on Alfonso Davies, do you think he's a good example of what can be done in the Canadian system to help foster young players, bring them through the system as we continue to try and really finesse and lay out this landscape in Canada to produce the best players? Or do you think he's just an exception to the case? Like he's just so wonderful that this is a player that would have been, you know, exceptional no matter what. You know, is he a case study for what can be done in this country to produce young talent? Or would he have just, you know, he's just a superstar no matter what? That's that's a good question. And, and I do think it's a little bit of both. Like, like definitely to your point there, like he, he's a generational, maybe a once in a lifetime talent who I think would have would have become great no matter what the situation. So I definitely think there's there's a lot of truth to that. But at the same time, like this is someone who was integrated into the Canadian national team youth system at the age of, I think it was 13 or 14. Like he was in their ID camps. He was um, with their U15 program, with their U17 program. So uh, in that regard, like, um, you know, it, it is an example of what can be, what's possible. And I, and I think that's part of the reason too, why he's feels so attached to the national team, obviously because of his background as well and what Canada means to him. But but he was playing with Jonathan David since he was 14 years old. So I think that's a good example. But no, you're definitely right. Like he probably would have been um, a superstar, you know, no matter what path he took. Farhan, you've obviously now followed Fonzi and are writing a book on him. What do you think his next steps are? Like as, as someone who's really close and you're seeing the development, you also watched him as a kid. What do you think his next steps in, in, in his football career is the next, let's say, five, ten years? Yeah, that's that's a great question. Um, you know, as I mentioned, I, I spoke to the the technical director of Bayern, and and he sees Al Alfonso as becoming one of the faces of Bayern Munich, uh, if he isn't already, you know, one of those. So, you know, I could see him having you know a long career there if if he wants, and he seems happy there. In terms of his his game, like uh, he's come a long way. Like people probably probably don't remember in his first couple of years um, in MLS. He had a grand total of zero goals and one assist. So he's worked a lot on that kind of end product. Obviously, in his youth, he was scoring a lot of goals, getting a lot of assists. So I think probably the next step for Alfonso, and I think he said this himself in interviews, he is it's that end product. It's getting more goals, getting more assists. Like that's that's the hardest thing to do in football, right? Um, everything else, like he's great at driving play forward and creating space and creating chances for his teammates. So I think it's just you know, working on that product, that production, the end product, and and maybe taking on more of a, a leadership role, whether it's with Bayern and or the the Canadian men's national team. So, um, yeah, uh, a lot of a lot of you know probably good things to come. Yeah, we look forward to following his career. That's for sure because he's still in the infancy of it. Farhan, appreciate you taking the time here on One Nation, and we can't wait to read the book. Yeah, thanks so much for having me. Thank you, Farhan. Farhan Devji, uh, writer, author. So Alfonso Davies, A New Hope will be coming out in May. Can't wait to get my hands on that. But on the thread of what we were just asking him there, mm. like where you see him and stuff. I mean, I don't know if you see him with Bayern for the rest of his career. I don't. Or if you see him making a move to the Premier League, you know. Or here's the thing. We keep talking about Alfonso as this, you know, player who can produce, who can score goals, playmaker, also can assist. We see that with the national team. Mm -hmm. Uh, John Herdman, like that's it. He doesn't want to talk about it. This is a guy who's playing up front. Alfonso Davies wants to play up front. Herdman's going to play him up front. Yeah. Do you see him as a left back? He is. For the rest of his career? Um, yes. So I'll say this, because there are kind of two questions in there. First, I don't see him at Bayern for his whole career. I think at a point, naturally as a footballer, you just want change. You want something different. You want a, a different challenge. You want to play against different opponents. I think Bayern will always be near and dear to him because that's a club that like literally exponentially raise his game and put him in a different stratosphere by playing. Um, 
even even if you look at him, like yes, he was fast, he was rapid, but like he went in kind of like scrawny, and like over like maybe eighteen months at Bayern, he was jacked, like huge. There's some I don't know what's in the food over there in Germany, but like if you look at Bayern's team, everyone is jacked, like hench, swole. Like I'm not trying to. I know trails, you could probably beat him up, but I'm not fighting. <laughs> I'm not fighting anyone. Like. They are just huge. Anyways, I digress. I can't beat him up. I can beat him in a race. Look. <laughs> <laughs> the road runner. Eh? Can't He's, even say that with a straight is, He face. is so rapid. No, but you, you want something different. You want a, a different challenge. But I think for me, when you look at his strengths, it's, he's a left back through and through. What I like is that. Whoa, 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 whoa. So do you not want him playing forward then with the national team? Well, let's say this. What was his best game this World Cup? Where did he play? Well, he played in many positions. His first game, his first game, first half, I loved him at left back because he's isolated. 1v1, a guy has to go and mark him. I like him there, man. Whipping in crosses. You get to see his speed. He gets to combine. But I think the biggest thing, too, is when you're playing, like, uh, an attacking position, there are people around you. I think when he's on the wing, he's very isolated. He's able to just, it's mano a mano, like, get around your guy, whip in a cross and make something happen. I think if you look at his strengths, naturally, Left back is like, that's his position. He could be the best in the world for a very, very long time at that spot. Yeah, I like him more in that wing back position. Um, I mean, it's all yeah. kind of relative. Like, yeah, like because you're saying wing back, yeah, left back. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I don't want him like a, like a typical full back, mm. right, where he stays. Or I don't know if that's best for him either with Canada, which, by the way, they did try. So if you remember, they had just come off this, like, historic win over the United States and Nations League. This mm -hmm. was back in 2019. Then they played the United States again, and Herdman played him as a left back. And the problem was, is like, you know, he wanted to run up, but there was just that lack of coverage. Yeah. Right, because that's the thing, too. If you're going to play that position, with Davies, he has to have a surrounding cast that also understands he's going to move. Great point. Right? Not traditional fullback where he stays put and just defends. He yeah. moves. He is more of that wingback where he goes on up. And they just didn't have that coverage. And they just couldn't provide it and they just got blown out by the United States. And I've played in many systems where, yeah, you can't, I'm not trying to get into tactics, but you play four in the back, right? And he's playing left back. But you realize, hey, only one side's going to go today. And I have no problem with that being Alfonso Davies. Like the mm -hmm. three slide over, that, that left center back ends up being kind of a three in the back. And you throw him high up the pitch because you know that he's going to whip in crosses. Mm -hmm. You know that he's going to be dangerous to defend. And what you have another team defending you. That's what Alfonso Davies can bring. So for me, it's a no-brainer. Left back for sure, or left wing back, however you want to look at it. But just on the flank and being a pest like he is at Bayern. Let's continue talking about the future because Atiba, I mean, his time is coming to an end just because Father Time doesn't care what victims he takes with him. Like what it just, it yeah. just happens. I mean, Atiba, yes, is, is, is phenomenal, has been phenomenal. And there are certain responsibilities that also come with being a leader. But when Atiba's time comes, do you think that's Alfonso Davies' torch to pick up and carry? So I wonder if you think I'm going to be crazy by saying this, but I, when I look at this new reborn Canadian side, Alistair Johnson is who sticks out to me. Now, I will say this, captains aren't always like the best players. They're the glue guy. They're the one that you look to and like, you know, where, where when things kind of go chaotic and you're like, who's the guy that can touch everyone in the room? Who's the guy that's like, could be the face and speak to the press? Who's that guy? I think Davies already has a lot on his shoulders being a mega superstar. We haven't had a superstar like that in Canada before. It would be nice if someone else kind of took the reins. In their own right, Alistair Johnson is so talented, but he also, for me, is he's everything that a captain would be. You he's have to fitting. be the face in another way. Yes. So I, it would be nice that Davies, that's just another thing added on. Let him worry about his performance. Let him worry about, like, carrying the team in that way. It would be nice if someone else stepped in. And I, I personally, when I'm looking at the guys, I haven't met any of them or all of them, but Alistair Johnson embodies a lot of what a captain would be. There is a debate that will rage on forever on how to go about choosing a captain. Mm. Because some people believe the player should choose who their captain is. Some people believe that is still in the hands of the manager. Because remember, your captain is obviously still your go-between as well, between the players and the manager. Yeah. To your point, there are different responsibilities that come with being a captain. You do have to speak to the media a lot. You know where I'm going to go with this, yeah. right? Because Alfonso Davies was heavily criticized at the World Cup for not making himself available mm -hmm. to media members. But that is what happens when you are the face. I mean, look at even what happened to the men. We know last summer in boycotting that game against yeah. Panama, they knew they still needed to speak to people. Who was it? Atiba.
So you have your captain also is your face, yeah. your voice. Mm -hmm. He needs to be ready to speak to people, take on that type of responsibility as well. It's not just what you do on the pitch. Agreed. Um, you know, or you could have your captain, you know, Canada Soccer could turn around and say it doesn't matter, Davies is our captain, but other people are gonna do X, Y, and Z. But you know media is gonna be like, but that's your captain and we wanna talk to him. I mean, I, again, like I've been doing this for 20 years. I can tell you right now, win, lose, draw, good times, bad times, your captain always is the one that comes out and speaks to people. Agreed. I, I think regardless of how you spin it, whether he's a future captain or not, you're gonna wanna hear him uh, speak because of his, the way that he's played and the level that he's played and the fact that he's the best player. So you're gonna wanna hear what he has to say now. I will say this to Alfonso, I don't need him every time to go and speak about the team and being captain, but he needs to make himself available because he is the face. Whether he likes it or not, he's so talented. He's the guy that everyone wants to just know a bit about. So it's just getting comfortable and familiar with the press. Now I will say that it is difficult um, if you have that thought in your mind, like, hey, I gotta go and talk and you, and you kind of like psych yourself out. But it's just little little tidbits that he needs to give. Um, but my initial thought of having Alistair Johnson as a, a captain in the future is because of that. Cause I feel like he does that effortlessly. And I think to pick a captain, it could be your team. But if you really look at a group, you know who like that leader is, who that like whisper is, who calms things down, mm -hmm. who players look to, younger players, older player, they all respect. Um, a lot is on Davy's shoulder. It would be nice for him maybe not to, to have that other extra responsibility. Alistair's a starter. He plays a significant role in the team. Doesn't mind speaking to the media. I mean, there's a lot there when you're looking at, okay, what are gonna be the responsibilities mm -hmm. of a captain? And yeah, I mean, this obviously, I'm a member of the media. I like speaking to players, but I also, I always say this to athletes too. Like you have to look at the media as well as a medium, as a go-to, for you to speak to the fans. Yeah. And yes, in today's day and age, we have so many options now. You have your own Instagram page, your own Twitter page, you have your own Twitch account, but you also still have to understand that the audience is pretty dissected. So while you're speaking to a certain audience at Twitch, do you know who he's not speaking to? My dad, Yeah. my mom. It's an obligation. They love soccer and they love Alfonso. He will never be speaking to them if he just sticks to yeah. his one medium of speaking to fans. Do you know what I yeah. mean? And, and no I'm not saying all the time, but come Gold Cup, come World Cup, come qualifiers, when you are a little bit more visible representing your national team, yeah. there is a broader audience to reach. So if, if you're aware of that, then you can speak to that broader audience. Yeah, it's, it's an obligation, like no question. Like I think what needs to happen though, there needs to be a marriage of like, obviously you're covering the game and you wanna speak to stars. Alfonso Davies is one of them, but there needs to be that harmony between media and him. And, and I don't know how that gets fixed, but he's definitely a guy I want to hear from. After every game, loss, win, Canada, you know what? whatever you, needs to be done. Here's the thing, you're governing body, right? So Canada Soccer, you have a PR person, and you basically say, like, if, if there's a week-long camp, Alfonso Davies is going to speak twice, because you don't also, like, you know, whatever. He's going to speak twice, on this day, that day. And, and it's done a conference style, mm -hmm. right? And there you go. And then, obviously, if you're rights holders, maybe you get a sit-down, whatever. But there is a dedicated day and time Right, so you don't bombard the guy. Like there are ways to do this. I have seen PR people like yeah. who are the best, who protect the athletes while also properly promoting mm -hmm. the athlete, the team, the logo. Right? You, you, need, you need proper PR around you. I'm available for hire. <laughs> Andy has it all figured out. Just, just pay me in pizza. Without pineapple. Oh, I was it. gonna go there actually. I was about to say what type of toppings. So, what is your ideal pizza? Let's talk about it quick. No, we can't talk about it. I want to know what Alfonso Davies' ideal pizza is. If he puts pineapple on it, that's it. I don't know he if might. we could ever be friends. Us fast people, we put pineapple on pizza. Did you just confess something? That I'm fast? No, that you put <laughs> pineapple on your pizza? We talked about this a few weeks back. No, but you never admitted that you put it on. I pizza. love pineapple on pizza. Like, yo, you know what? I just saw you... Alfonso, <laughs> I think he wants you to play for Arsenal. I'm going to say don't do it now. I'll give you all the cherry blasters, all the candy you ever want, brother. Just come all, come on over to the Gunners. You want, you want him to play for Arsenal? Nah, he's not going to do that. He's going to go somewhere luxurious, a Real Madrid. You he, think he's going to go to La Liga? He's going to La Liga in about two, three years. Remember I said it. Remember this day, Trills? Remember our failed handshake? Remember <laughs> all of it? But remember I said it. He's going to go somewhere. Yeah, like Real Madrid. You think Madrid. he's going to go to La Liga before yeah. going to Premier League? Yeah, I think so. He wants to play against Kyle Larin. <laughs> Larinho. What's his name? <laughs> it's Larin.
Kyler. Kyler, now I can't even say his name properly. All right, this is great. I could talk about Davies all the time.